Hi, this is Passy's World of ICT, and welcome to part two of our car racing game. In this uh, one, what you're able to do is we can pick which racetrack we're going to have. The original one was Australia that we built in part one. Use the up arrow to accelerate and then the right and left arrows to uh, turn. And the idea was to try and get a lap time under 10 seconds. And if you're good, you might even get down to five. If we just restart the game, we've now got extra tracks. You can race in the good old USA, and this is our USA track. Um, same sort of thing, just use the upper arrow to accelerate, but this track is a little bit more challenging. Remember, when you run off into the grass like that, you slow down dramatically, and we're in the grass again. Try and sprint for the finish line if we can, and we get the... Um, slowing down with the skid mark there if we go too fast and we have a third track as well from this new opening screen which we have in part two you can click on the Japanese flag and get the Japan track and uh, can race around that one as well and it's got a couple of tight little corners here to do and then make your way around to the finish line and see if you can ace that one in under 10 seconds. So let's get on to how we build the part two uh, game here. The first thing is here's the original track we had of Australia and then we built this first one of America but we didn't like that and this is the final one we went with here and just put a few trees around the outside and things like that and then we had the Japanese track which we built. This was done in Adobe Fireworks making 480 by 360 pixel uh, big drawings uh, with the Bezier pen tool and bending our curved shapes with that. We were careful to use the same green in every picture as part one so that the code for slowing down in the grass uh, wouldn't be affected by that. The next thing to do is to import those tracks into the background of the stage. So it's just a matter of clicking import, going to computer, navigating to where they were on our computer and bringing them in and just renaming them here like track one, Ost, track two, USA. We then also built as part of the stage background another one with the um, painter in uh, Scratch. And this one here, it just is a blue background with welcome to the time trial racing left space in here to put the car and the finish line sprites position them and left space down the bottom to put the flags in as well so that was just done with the text tool i think just using um helvetica bold for that so that was our next step to get all of that background set up if we go down the right hand side here right hand bottom corner we can see our three flags we obtained them off the internet edited them in adobe fireworks resized them to be 100 pixels wide and then it was a matter of uh just going here um, for a new sprite and going to computer and locating them and bringing them in and renaming them Aust USA and Japan so those sprites could come in and be clickable and then from the click we could set up a racetrack. Okay then, over in the right hand side here's our setup for the opening screen. Now the next step was to position the car and the finish line on that. Now if we click on the finish line and go across and look at it up the top we can see it's at a position of 0 and 14 so we've coded in that when the start flag is clicked make sure that um, sprite is at position 0 and 14 here uh, and then later on when we find out what track we've got going down this code here you can see that it'll position it at various places uh, on the track which is going to be appropriate to the start line for that track likewise on the car if we uh, go to the car sprite and look at the car up the top here it's at negative 6814 so we change the code that when the start flag is clicked on the car um, to position it at negative 6814 so it would be there on the opening screen uh, right now the next thing we need to look at is what happens when something's clicked. So if we go to the Australia flag and have a look at its script code. So there's an action uh, control block you can use when Australia is clicked 
and we drag that out of the control blocks. So we broadcast a message we made up, a new message, Australian track. All right, now that's gonna pass that information onto the car and finish line sprite so that they know to position themselves on the Australian track in the appropriate time. Now, the flags all need to disappear as soon as a race starts. So there is a broadcast message that comes from the stage after it's set up the track that says, hey, we're ready to start Australia, for example, and then so we need to hide the Australian flag. But even if they've picked a different track like USA or Japan, we still need to hide that Australian flag so it's not still staying there hanging around in the way when we start our car race. All right, so a key thing on this Australia flag sprite is that it's gonna broadcast this message, hey guys, we're using the Australian track because the person clicked the Australian flag. So let's go into the stage and have a look at the scripting there. Uh, just some stuff left over from part one to initialize the lap times to zero. And when the green flag's clicked and it starts, we wanna show the intro screen, which is that blue background with the white writing on it. If it receives the Australia track message as a result of the Australian flag being clicked, we switch the background over to the Australian track so that we're ready to start the race. Now, as soon as we've done that, we can broadcast a message called Start Australia. And Start Australia is broadcast to both the finish line and the car sprite so that they can position themselves onto the track in the right places. If we go back to the car sprite, for example, just click on that, see here that when it receives Australia track up the right hand part here uh, it sets its size appropriately and positions itself on the Australian track and points um, over to the right there ready to uh, start the race. Okay then let's just run through that sequence of events one more time. We'll click on the Japan flag sprite down here in the right hand corner. Now with the Japan script uh, when it's clicked, when starts clicked, it's going to position itself down the bottom right hand corner of the starting screen, as we can see over there at those coordinates. If that flag gets clicked, it's going to broadcast a message Japan track. Now that Japan track message will go um, to a few places. First, it will go to the stage. And looking at the stage here, when the stage down the bottom here, when the stage receives Japan track, it'll switch over to the background so that we've got the Japan track showing. Finish line, if we click on that sprite, will also receive a message down the bottom here that if it's received Japan track, it knows to go to a certain position on the Japan track and that's where it needs to be. The other thing is on the car, if we go to the car, um, down here in the middle, when it receives Japan track, it'll set its size and it will go to the start line position on the Japan track and be ready to race. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Let's have a look at the car um, uh, code here just to finish off. We can see it's positioning itself first on the start menu screen as part of that screen. Then depending on what track it receives down here, it'll position itself appropriately on that track. Okay, the rest of this code here, if we go down in the uh, car script, is just from part one, that we're, uh, if we're touching that grass color, we want to slow the speed down to one, and if we're not doing that, it'll be out the other side of this if, and it'll just move the car forward, whatever our speed is up to that number of steps. On the right-hand side here, the down and up arrow are used for controlling speed. The down arrow does reverse, so we have negative values in it. The up arrow does positive to move forwards. The left and right arrow here are dependent on speed, so the faster you go, the tighter the turning circle you get. Uh, with these final things here, these are all from part one and you need to watch the part one tutorial to fully understand how these work, but we've got a speed limit on the car that if it exceeds, exceeds maximum speed, um, which is called up by the skid sprite, the code in that, it'll slow down to a speed of three, whether it's going forwards or backwards. Uh, down here in the bottom right hand corner we have uh, when the space is pressed that we have braking occur and over here on the left hand side of that we have the uh, lap counting uh, which is involved with the car touching the finish line again see the part one tutorial for those details 
Okay, so that's how we set up the part two of the racing game. It's a lot of fun. You can go to the details in this YouTube video and find out a link to our website where we have full details of part two, uh, which will show all the screen prints of the code and run down what you need to do and give you the tracks if you want them. And it'll also have a link back to part one if you still need to do the part one tutorial or you want to revisit that to find out uh, some information. So thank you very much. Get into Scratch. It is really good fun and we hope you enjoy it.